you are shouting hallelujah like an hungry man. After all, if you have started this morning, it's just one hour more, then you finish. You soon finish. So shout a better hallelujah. We thank of the grace given to us to see the fifteenth day of our fasting. And I pray everyone who have started will finish with testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. I like us to know that to every advancement, there is always a preparation from the pit of hell. Every advancement for a believer will attract a reaction from the pit of hell. Every advancement, every time God plans advancement for you, devil will always anti plan in order to scatter it. God made man. Devil scattered it. God planned to save man through Noah. Devil scattered it. God raised a king for them. I mean, raised a priest. They reacted. They don't want God gave them a king. They scattered it. Devil always initiate a scattering plan to every of God's plan. That's why you are facing challenges. Because there's a plan of greatness ahead. And devil is under planning every day. And that's why the greatest headache of the path of darkness is the growth and expansion of the church and of our destinies. Because we are the church. That is, we are the light of the world and the greatest enemy of the church growth and even our lives is the devil himself. Remember, the scripture made us to understand that Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. Now, the Bible made us to understand that Jesus recognizes the gate of hell as the opponent. He recognizes the devil and his cohort as the opponent of your advancement. As the opponent of the church's advancement. So the greatest headache of the, of the, of the devil is the growth of the church. The more we expand, the more the kingdom of hell is reduced. The more we grow, the more the enemy goes low. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. The Bible says that ye are the light of the world. And Matthew chapter 5, 13 and 14. He says, ye are, this, ye are the light of the world, and a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Verse 13 says, ye are the salt of the earth. So we are the light, we are the salt. Salt makes things, get things sweeter. Light makes things brighter. That is, anywhere we are, we are world changers. Say big amen. Yes. Say I'm a world changer. But what brings changes is the light inside us. The light we carry. The light that illuminates through us. The light that shows forth through us. And that's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, that in whom the God of this world has blinded the eyes and the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, be shown unto them. Devil is against the light. Devil is against the light at your disposal. Devil fights your light. Look at the testimony of our dear sister yesterday. She said, I've been going to churches. I've been going to churches. But the first day I came here, I heard the message, the light. Going to churches. I've been missing pastors. For a whole year, she was under affliction. For a year, asthma tied her down. And devil did not want her to see the light. Devil made her to resist the light. Let's go to church. She said no. Let's go to church. She said no. For a whole year. She will have been free. I mean free for one year ago. But devil blinded her eyes from seeing the light. 
That's why the devil is against the light that will set you free from every cage. Tonight, our eyes shall be opened. The Lord is opening our eyes. Shout a better amen. amen. And that's why the prayer of faith is a vital force for securing and sustaining supernatural church growth. Oh, tonight, that without faith, man is bound to fail. As a believer, without faith, failure is sure. Without faith, fail, because faith is a life wire of every believer. The faith in you is the God in you. Because that faith is the umbilical cord that connects you to God. The faith at work in you is your UC. Without umbilical cord, the fetus is finished. That's the connecting factor between the fetus and the, and the mother. Remove it, the baby is finished. In the same way, remove the faith, you are finished. Because your faith connects you to God. That's why faith failure equals destiny failure. Build your faith, you build your destiny. James 1. 6 to 7. Let him ask it, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, dri driven with the wind and being tossed. Nothing wavering, nothing wavering, nothing wavering. So faith failure equals to destiny failure. What heart failure is to the body is what faith failure is to destiny. What heart failure is to, to the body, human body, is what faith failure is to destiny. That's why we must do everything possible to jealously guard our faith. Glory to God. And that's why as we fast and pray this season, I see God causing our faith to grow in the name of Christ. I like us to know that whatever cannot stop the church from praying, cannot stop the church from growing. Isaiah 66, verse 7 to 8. Remember, every time we mention church, we're talking to you and I. The Bible says, before she traveled, she brought forth. When she came, she brought forth a man-child. She delivered a man-child. Who has asked such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall a nation be born at once? But as soon as Anne traveled, she brought forth her children. Our prayer is our labor room. Every time we pray in the labor room, and after labor room is children, so our labor room is a place of delivery of answers. But the prayer must be in faith. And that's why throughout this week, talking about the prayer of faith is key to sustaining supernatural church growth. I see God expanding us on every side in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a better amen. amen. A cry is not what counts in prayer, but the cry of faith. Career in your business. And the same applies to church growth. When we cry, we must cry in faith, not empty cries. Not empty cries. The cry of faith makes, brings a change. The cry of faith brings a difference. I was sharing with us last week or two weeks ago of the, lay, of the woman that has been believing God for fruit of the womb in Canada, in Toronto. And for a long time, we've been praying, and, but mysteriously, this time around, she, she didn't go anywhere, locked herself up, and um, cried to God with faith. And by the grace of God, by the time she came out of the house, she came out pregnant of twins. And now, yesterday, I was I did naming for her, for her on phone to a boy and a girl after um after like 10, 10 or 14 years, I can't remember, but more than eight years of waiting on God. Don't just cry. Cry in faith. A boy and a girl. Cry in faith. Cry in faith. Don't cry empty cries. 
Many of our cries are useless cries. That person that came in to share testimony today, he said, I never knew I've been crying nonsense cry. I was, I was crying a useless cry. Many of our cries only attract pity. They don't attract testimonies. The cry that lacks faith is a cry that attracts pity. And when you are pitied, you end up in the pit. But when you cry the cry of faith, you are being envied. You are supposed to be down, but you are in faith. Nothing wavering. Being confident that the cry of faith will bring a change. Stop allowing men to pity you. They will only put you in the pit of life. Refuse men's pity. Embrace the faith in God that will make you men's envy. Refuse men's pity. So don't just cry in prayers for the cry of faith. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was passing and two blind men ran to him and said, Jesus, Master, Son of David, have mercy on us. And he said unto them, Do you believe I can do this? Say, Yes, Lord, we believe. And um, verse 29 now says, He touched their eyes and according to your faith, beyond you. So they cried in faith. They cried in faith. They cried in faith. Look at the testimony of our dear sister today. The prayer has been answered, but she was still expecting today. That's how many of us are, and that's why we delay our blessings. Prayer answers in yesterday, but on the following day, she's still saying, God, when will it happen now? When will you have Lord do it now? Now, if you are to be God, you will not. Look at woman believes this. I've done this since yesterday. I've done this in the same way when you cry in faith, it revives your expectation. It revives your expectation. Every now and then you check. You check. That's why when I pray for people by the grace of God, I say, go and check it. Because a cry of faith is a cry of instant answer. A cry that it says, now it's done. Please don't ever delay your blessings again with your cry of fear. Many are crying a cry of fear. Lord, when will you do it? Lord, when will you do it? I believe in you. That's not fatal. That's anxiety. I know you do it. I know you are faithful. Mm -mm. That cry is a cry of doubt. The cry of faith remains rigid. Father, I know you've done it. I know you're a faithful God. Bros, Alpha, no, I know, I know my God will do it. Uh -uh, that's fear. I know my God will do it. I know He has done it. That's how to remain strong in faith. Nothing wavering. If we must get the result, we must continue to pray. Faith incubated prayers. Faith incubated. You know, when you incubate something, incubate me, you put it in a temperature that will allow it to mature. Incubation means a moment of producing heat that will speed up the rate of delivery or action if it's in um, chicken, in reproduction. If, it's, if, you, if you put incubation, you allow it to mature. If it's in medical science, they put the baby in incubator to allow it to grow at the right temperature. Now, when you pray faith, incubator prayer, that is you put prayer inside the incubator of faith. The faith creates the warmth, the heat required to mature your prayers to answers. Faith incubated prayers. That is, as you are praying, you are storing the prayer inside faith incubator. It matures your prayer to answers. It transforms your prayers from ordinary egg to a chicken or to a chick. It transforms your prayer to answers. Incubator does not leave you the same. No. Not the same way you put a baby in the incubator, it will come out. Except the devil, the devil is chasing the baby. But on a normal, on a normal, regular, you know, situation, when you put something in an incubator, it matures. It comes out as expected. In the same way, pray faith incubator prayers. The prayer that has been stored in faith for faith to process to answers. But how do you do that? The word of God that can mature your prayers to answers. 
Locate the word of God that can ripen your 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 you know your prayers to answers. Locate the word that will fast track the rate of production that will allow the hormones, the plant hormones that will allow the fruit to be ripened in your prayers. I like you to understand that if that is not being done, you just be wasting your time praying the same prayer. Locate the word because the truth is this. The Bible says that Psalm 119 verse 89, forever O Lord thy word is set in heaven. When the word of God is being injected in prayers, you have put God at the center of answers. Forever O Lord. So when the word is injected, for the fact that you quoted the word, it shows that you have confidence in the word. And when your confidence is being tested and proven, God will be present to deliver the testimonies. When your confidence, Hebrews 10, 35 and 36, he said, cast not thy, for, cast not thy, thy away thy confidence, that's a great recompense of reward. For ye have the need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, that you may obtain the promise. But your confidence must be at work. Your confidence is what, is what graduates your prayers into testimonies. I know the word of the Lord says this. Inject the word. It will incubate your prayers properly. Inject the word. It will, it will create the right temperature. Enhance the maturation. I mean, the maturation process of your answers. Many of us pray empty prayers. We pray a prayer that lacks the word of God. And when it lacks the word of God, it will not go through to God. Because God's word I mean, God is being attracted by his word. And this week, the Lord will remember us for good. Every of our prayers will turn with testimonies. <laughs> Hebrews 4, verse 2. The Bible says, the same word that was being preached to us was being preached to them, but it, it prompted them not because it was not mixed in the you will not, it was not mixed with faith in the heart of them that had it. Until your prayer mixes with faith, it can't deliver results. Until your prayers mixes with faith. And what is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So, your prayer must mix with faith for it to deliver the right. Your prayer must mix with faith for it to deliver the right result. Your prayer must mix with faith. Your prayer must mix with faith to deliver the, the right result. Us desire answers, but we don't have the required word. The required word is what qualifies us for desired answers. Required word. That's what the Bible says, Job, Job 6 25. How possible are right words? The right word will inject expected faith. The expected faith will deliver the expected results. When the right word is released, it initiates a move of God because the right word will, will attract God himself. You can't be quoting scriptures that are anti the situation. Quote the scriptures that are for the situation. And as a result, it heats up your desires, thereby delivering the answers. Remember, that commitment to kingdom advancement and divorce brings the saints into favor with God. As we engage into God and his kingdom, climate of the kingdom, we are entitled to rewards. Saints, let me say this here. The prayer you pray for yourself, who will answer it? Is it not God? Now, the prayer you pray for the church, who will answer it? Is it not God? Now, the one you pray for the church, you have obeyed God first. When you obey God, he will pay you. And among the pay is your desires. So, when you satisfy God, He gratifies your need. When you satisfy God, He gratifies your need, even before you even ask for it. Remember, when you start praying for the kingdom, He gets you a point before you even ask, He hears. While you're here speaking, He does it. We can enter that dimension. Make God your priority. Make God your priority. Make God your priority. When God becomes a priority, you assess his authority. You seek like him. You talk like him. 
For example now, let me say this here. There is a way whereby you are so used to some individuals that when you want to call somebody that is new, you call their names. When you have when when been, been with someone for so long and you are so close to the person, the, talk to the person often, I, I think you have been staying with, you know, maybe Rabokala or whatever. And every time Rabokala is always around you, I'm just saying. And somebody now came, they call his name Lesedi. You want to call Lesedi, say Rabokala. Why? You are too used to the person. When you came for the kingdom, God will always make mistake of blessing you. Unconsciously, not because he wants to bless you, because you are too used to him. You are always there with him. Every prayer you pray is him. You pray his kingdom. So when you even want to bless some other people, he will have blessed you. And the blessing of the Lord are without repentance. The gift and the color of God. So when God gives you things, he won't collect it back. And that's why those who serve God, they get accumulated blessings. Those who are always in the present, they get because even the one that belongs to them and doesn't belong to them, they get it. Because they are always there. Our father, Bishop, whatever wants to say something, he wants to go. He said, you know, the, way, the reason why God loves me so much, he said, because in the day, I'm with him. In the night, all others are sleeping, I'm still with him. When God is looking for a companion, around 2 a.m., he said, David, are you there? He said, I'm there. Every time, he's always in the office. As a result, God, companion. As a result, he's always hearing the voice of God. As a result, he's blessed, you know, in a way whereby people look at him like a small God. Because his work with God has enhanced his worth in life. So make God your priority. Make God your priority. One of my prayer points majorly in this season is, Lord, melt my heart with yours. When you look, when you, when your heart and God's heart are together, automatically you look like God. You operate like God. You place a demand on things, it happened on the spot. Somebody called me this morning around when I was coming for our prayer. The person vomited from 3 a.m. till 6 a.m. And as I was coming, they called me and I peeked around 6 a.m. And I prayed. And I said, come that was the end. By the time I said, call me back, I mean, we called after 50 minutes, it went. I said, call back again, 30 minutes. By the time he called, he called around 12. She slept off for God to call back. Now, what I'm saying is this. When you are too close to God, when you are used to God, when you are desiring more of God, you operate like God. You enjoy the wonders of God. And your faith grows without stress. That's the benefit. Your faith grows without stress. Who you walk with determines what works in you. Who you walk with determines what works through you. Who you walk with determines what works around you. I pray our spiritual life will grow. Our spiritual life will grow. Psalm 102 verse 13. The Bible says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for a time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. He said, For thy servant take a pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. He take a pleasure in a stone. For example, now, those who are giving to us transport, this year the Lord will dare you supernaturally. It's not a prayer because every opportunity for the kingdom in engagement is an opportunity for destiny advancement. Every opportunity for kingdom engagement is opportunity for I mean destiny advancement. You cannot trade with God and fail. You cannot trade with God and regret. Every trade with God will always make you, make you great. Every trade you make with God makes great. You can't trade with God and fail. So it's not a prayer. You say, Amen. Don't say the Bible says Galatians 6, um, 7. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, same shall he reap. And you see, trading with God is so dangerous. Luke 6, 38. The Bible says that um, give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down. Shake it together shall men, and run you over. Shall men give to your bosom? So when you trade, you get the same. You get overflow, abundance, supernatural, in the order and the class of God. This year shall be your best year. As you sow seed, it will generate results. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I like us to have this mindset that Lord, as I walk with you in faith for the church to grow, my destiny will 
purpose. As I walk with you in faith for the church to expand, my life to expand. Be on your feet right now and say, Lord, I receive the grace, Lord, to engage productively, to engage fruitfully. I receive the grace to engage productively, to engage fruitfully. My faith must grow. And as my faith grows, my destiny will advance. As I pray for the church and the church growth, my destiny will grow. My life will grow. My love will expand. My investment will speak. In shame, we are prayed. I like us to pray this prayer point. Just one prayer. Father, I will not waste these 21 days. The remaining days of this fasting will speak for me. Let these remaining days be my own days of harvest. People are sharing testimonies. I'm the next. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Mine is the next. These remaining days of these 21 days, there will not be a waste. There will be days of harvest. 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 Harvest of prayers. Harvest of answers to my prayers. I rebuke distractions. I rebuke distractions. I rebuke distractions. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I'd like you to know that God is looking for co-laborers. May we be found available. Amen. Say better, amen. amen. Some of us are looking for destiny connection. Connect with service. You connect with destiny. We are looking for who connect us to millions. Connect with service. It will connect you to billions. The best connection is God's connection. And God's connection is through kingdom service. But it doesn't look straight. It's not direct. It's indirect. It will not look like that at the beginning. At the end, it shall speak. I pray God will find us worthy. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here tonight. You are not saved. I'd like to pray with you. Should in case. We can assume. You need Jesus in your life. 